Hey guys, it's Rahim. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new to the channel, smash the subscribe button because I talk about property investment, personal development, and how to gain financial freedom. In this video, I'm gonna share with you whether buy to let is still a viable investment strategy for investors in 2024. This is the seventh time since the new year people have been asking me whether buy to let is still a good strategy. So in this video, that's exactly what I'm gonna do with you. I'm gonna take you to a research. We do the research together. We learn about where the property market is, where the rental market is, and what are the changes that are, that are coming up and what are the sort of returns people are still getting investing in property as well as what are the finance options we could exploit to get our investment going, if it is a viable investment that is. But before we get to that, I'd like to ask you for a quick thing. We've done a research, we've noticed 61% of the people that are watching my videos have not subscribed to my channel. If you are one of those, I'd ask you to kindly please hit the subscribe button to join the amazing, beautiful family. And whilst you're there, hit the like button so that the algorithm will also move and push this video to wider and wider audiences. Is buy to let dead? It is still a viable investment strategy in 2024. So in order for us to justify that, we need to do a quick research. You see, one of the things you want to be doing when you're doing investment is to do a market research, to know the market trend, assess whether these property prices are going up or whether rental is going up, what is happening with the property market. So that's what we want to be doing before we come to conclusion because Here's the thing, if you do not do your research, you listen to the news, you're dead on the water because the news never portray good things. They always talk about doom and gloom, how the world is falling apart. That's all they talk about. So let's do that research together now in this video to learn and understand whether investing in property is the right thing. So what i like us to look at first is what is the average house prices and by how much property prices has gone up since 2000 to 2024. So let's do this together. Okay, right, okay. So I am on the Office of National Statistics. That's, that's, that's where I am now, okay? So what we are going to do, we're going to work out what the market is saying, okay? What the market is saying. So again, we're not making a, a, anything up here. We're going through the um, uh, land registry database. So let's do a research. So now we've got United Kingdom here, okay? That we are fine. We're going to select January 2020. We've selected that. We're going to select January 2000. We have selected that. And now we're gonna do January 2024. Again, we've selected that. Let's confirm that now. So that then takes us to this little data here, okay? So we've got United Kingdom, we've got January 2000, and we've got January 2024. And we have selected all type of property, okay? So what we now want to do is to look at the trend of the property market. Is it going up? Is it going down? What's happening to it? So looking at this map now, let me zoom that map out nicely. So you can see here, in the 2000s, property prices were how much? Let's have a look. Property prices were we're about eight UK wide here, okay? Fast forward to today, that same house that would have worth, how much again? That same house that, that, that would have worth 84,000 pounds is now worth 287,782 pounds in the past 24 years. That tells you property prices has gone up over time. And if you look at that trend, if you look at that line, it's going up, going up, go, going up. And then it had a little dip here, a little dip here. You can see that, that dip is in 2009. 2009 to 2008, 2009 is when we had the, 2008, 2009 is when we had the recession. Remember that re recession where property prices promoted? That was then, it went down, slightly there and then guess what after we've gone past 2008 2009 it gradually picks up again it gradually picks up it went up it went up and then you can see these trenches here as well these trenches you can see here this downfall here is during covid so you see property prices went down a little bit during covid 
right? And then guess what? It shoots up again to 265,676 pounds. And again, it goes up and then it continue to go up, it continue to go up and it continue to go up. So in essence then, in the past 20 years, property prices are going up from 84,000 to 287,000 pounds. You do the maths. How much percent is that, right? How many percent? You're talking about even triple, literally the property price went up four times more, five times more from that 84,000 pounds. So that's another saying, when you're buying properties, you're not buying it for tomorrow, next month, next year. You're buying it for long term. Keep your properties for lifetime. It gives you better return on your investment. So in average, property prices goes up in crazy 80 to 15%. But looking at this now, in the past 24 years, it has gone up significantly. Despite having the recession, despite having COVID, despite having all these wars in Afghanistan, Iraq, you name it, property prices continue to go up in value in average. So now we know where we are with that, right? That now makes you perfect sense. Let's now look at the rental market. The rental market is what we need to look at now, okay? So, so what we need to do first, let's look at the average, okay? Let's go up to the top, okay? Now, let's look at the overview of what ONS is telling us, right? ONS is telling us that property rental prices paid by tenants in the UK rose by 5.1% in the past 12 months since they've taken the data, which is June 2023 up from 5% in the past 12 months. It's gone up by 5.1%. And that is an annual increase of 5.1% in England, 5.8% in Wales, and 5.5% in Scotland for the past 12 months. Moving on. So now, the next thing we want to do, let's look at the countries within the UK, right? I think that would help us a bit more to understand. Now we're drilling down to the regions where we want to invest, okay? I don't know what, what that region may be for you, but let's look at the countries, right? Now, let's look at Wales, okay? It says here, private rental prices in Wales increased by 5.8% in the past 12 months to June 2023. This is up from an increase of 5% in May 2023. It is the highest annual percentage change since Wales data series began in 20. 10, the highest ever. Wales annual inflation also rose because of average rental price rose sharply in the month of June by 9% compared to a smaller increase in 2022. So, so now we're drilling down and this is what the government said, okay? This is based on the government statistics. So the next one I want to look at is the people that are literally looking in fine details. Companies like Homelet. Let's look at Homelet. What did Homelet say? And this is ONS. Office of National Statistics quoting Homelet in their report. That's how reliable this source is, okay? It says here, private organizations such as Homelet report annual inflation for new tenancies in Wales over the past year. Homelet announced inflation for new tenancies in Wales. They said it has increased by 10.1% in the past 12 years month. Hello? Rent has gone up by 10.1% in the past 12 months in Wales. And guess what? They said it is likely that the rise in uh, IPRPS annual inflation of Wales in June 2023, it is starting to reflect the observed rise in new let annual inflation over the past year. In essence, they're saying it would continue to go up in value. Okay, let's look at Scotland. Scotland, it increased by 5.5% in the past 12 months. This is up by 5.4% in May 2023. It is the highest annual percentage change since Scotland data series began in 2012. Hello? However, stock measures remain substantially below homelet annual inflation new tenancy in Scotland and at 15% in 12 months to June 2023. The rental market gone up by 15.8% in Scotland. And it is likely that this continue to rise. Annual, um, annual inflation for, for Scotland is reflecting the high new let 
annual inflation observed during the past year and is fed into the IPR, IPHRP's stock measures. The cost of living is what causing all deal to go out. Therefore, the government in Scotland is looking to cap the tenancy increase because it's going up ridiculously and that would be the worst thing they could ever do, trying to play properties into politics. So, so um, capped mid tenancy, that's what the government want to do, but we're not interested in that because they know they're not going to do that. If they did that, they'll be killing the Scottish property market. So let's look at Northern Ireland. Pri private rental, private rental and price in Northern Ireland increased by 9.6%. Hello, in the past 12 months. Higher than other countries in anywhere in the UK. Northern Ireland data lag behind the, the, the rest of the UK, but it will be updated in the index of private housing rental price. If you're asking what that IPHRP means, it means index of private housing rental price it's to be published in 2023. So now you can see the benefit of investing in property. What that is saying basically, properties are going up in value. The rental price also is going up in value. So that then gives us a kind of a cushion to understand, yes, we may want to invest in property. So let's look at the next one. Regulation change. The government wanted to introduce section 21, section 24, and whatever sections they, they wanted to introduce in 2024. But they have pushed the can down the road. So in, in essence, they might not do the changes for now. So all the people that are worried about it may have a little bit of a comfort at the moment, but they are gonna change it eventually. So when they, when they push to change in that, people will be scared a little bit there. There'll be a little bit of skepticism going on and people may want to flog their properties and that's where investors like yourself will come in. So the regulation changes also. It's not gonna impact you if you're looking to invest right now. Number three, let's look at the return on investment. Now we know property prices goes up seriously high, okay? And we know the rent in Wales, 10.1%. In Scotland, 15.8%, and in England, about 5.1%, okay? You can see, literally, the rent is going up. But if you're an investor at this point, you'll be thinking where you want to invest. In the UK, you know Scotland is doing really, really well, okay? You know Ireland is killing it. Northern Ireland is killing it, basically. And then you've got Wales, 10.1%. So either ways, if you're investing in properties in the UK, you're getting serious return on your investment. I'll give an example. Suppose we bought a property for £100,000 and we spent about maybe, let's say, £35,000. We got the deposit £25,000, spent about £10,000 to £15,000 to, to do the property up. Let's say we spend about £35,000 and we rent that property up and that property, let's say we now know how much rent is going, let's say generate a maybe minimum of 300 pounds per calendar month every single month. Let's do the maths. Right, let's say we bought the property for 100,000 pounds and we spent about 35,000 pounds. We've got that. Let's say we're making 300 pounds net profit every single month. If you times that by 12, times 12, that gives us 3,600 pounds. So we've invested 35,000 pounds. So if you divide that by 35,000 pounds, we divide 3,600 by 35,000 pounds, that gives us a return of investment of 10.28%, okay? So that then, if you invest in properties now in the UK, you are generating 10.2% in average in your investment. Again, that tells you perhaps you want to consider investing in properties. For £30,000, you get that return. So if you're investing in the stock market, do you think you can get that in every year? Perhaps not, because it fluctuates, is, is in it. Whereas when it comes to property, the rent, now we know, is going up 10 to 15% a year. Whilst the capital appreciation also is in our favor. And perhaps, who knows, your investment area may be even performing better than the UK average wide, okay? Next, number four. The fourth thing you want to be looking at if you're looking to invest in properties, if you're thinking that would work, is your finance options. What are the options there for investors to buy real estate investment? Well, we have the normal mortgage. You can see a property, right? You can go and 
offer to buy that property, you agree on price, you get a normal buy to let mortgage, you get the mortgage and rent the property out. Okay, that's another option for you. Second option could be where you could use a short term lending to buy a dilapidated house. You fix that house so you can force the value. Okay, that then takes you on a short term loan, which is a bit expensive, but it helps you force the value of the property. Okay, that could be another option you could use and rent the property out, remortgage and rent the property out. Perhaps you want to use your equity. Maybe you've got a property at, at, at home that you have not pulled any of your money out. Maybe you can use that property equity, remortgage that property, pull that money out so you can go and buy houses that way as well. Or perhaps you can use the property instead of selling it, you can use it as a collateral. You can say, look, I have £100,000 equity in this house. You go and look for £80,000 property, right? Buy that property without putting any of your own money down. I hope you know what you're doing. If you don't know, there's a link in this video. Book a strategic call with one of my specialists. They will talk you through how you could join the family to help you make a wise investment decision. So basically, you can use your equity, then buy that house, fix the house however way you want to fix it, push the value up slightly, or a bit more, or a lot more, you then remortgage at a higher rate, you pay the bank the £100,000 loan without even touching your property, right? Your property still stay intact. You yeah. haven't taken anything from it. You just used it as a collateral to buy that house. So there's so many finance options. I cannot go through them in all this video because the video is taking a bit longer now. But these are the options you can use to finance your property deal. Five, property management. You see, in order for you to make sure your property is working for you in 2024, you need to include the management cost to looking after the property. At the end of the day, you want to be a property investor, not an estate agent. So you factor that 10 to 12% management fees in your analysis. Looking at that, if you factor that in, you're still going to be making about £300. But you see, it's important for you to select the right management agent to manage your property in order for it to help you out. And also, is it viable? Perhaps you want to look at the future outlook, which, which is what we've just talked about. We know all property prices continue to, to go up, but what is the future trend of the property market? Again, history tends to repeat itself. If, if it goes up, it continues to go up. Long term, maybe the short term, it will fluctuate a little bit because we've got some wars going, we've got Ukraine, we have the Middle East, we have a Gaza going and all that sort of thing. So perhaps it might dip a little bit and we've got lots, lots of elections coming in 2024 as well. We have the highest elections since record day began. Elections literally, it's gonna be all over the news this year. So that might fluctuate a little bit, especially in the UK, we expect our election to be an end of this year. That might maybe dip the properties a little bit, but it's an opportunity as well for you as an investor to go and take advantage of that perhaps to start your investment journey. So what is my take on this? What is my recommendation? Again, my recommendation is based on my experience and the experience of the people I'm working with. So you don't have to take the experience and I suggest you seek legal and finance advice before you make your decision in investing in property. But what, what is my take? My take is property buy to let investment is still a viable investment. One, because rent is going up significantly whilst property prices are going up. So you're still gonna make massive return on your investment. And the beauty of it is a steady recurring income. You don't have to be physically working to make this money. And again, it provides you an opportunity to hedge against inflation. So in a nutshell, for me personally, that will not, nothing will stop me from investing in 2024. I'm going as hard as I went in 2023 to acquire more properties, buy more properties, to build my property investment portfolio to the next level because I know, in average, it goes up significantly. I really hope this video has been helpful. If this video has been helpful, smash the like button below. Subscribe to my channel for more amazing videos. I look forward to sharing the next video. Thank you.